Alright, so in this video we're going to be talking about manipulating the camera since we've already touched a bit on uh, handling the face facial expressions and the bones as well. Now the camera can be equally as important because it's another source of potential movement within the scene and different shots are going to convey uh, different kinds of feelings. So in order to manipulate the camera, we have to go down to model manipulation and make sure we have camera light accessories selected. From there, we can uh, basically move around in the scene on the frame we want. Um, and then whenever we have the shot uh, as how we want it to see, we register that as a keyframe for the camera. And we know this is manipulating the camera because we have the camera selected. So I'm going to go ahead and right click here to move to Miku's side. And then I'm going to register that as a keyframe on uh, frame 30. So from frame 0 to frame 30, that's what the camera is going to do. It's going to move to Miku's side and you can see that when we hit play. Now we can also do more than just rotating. We can zoom in by scrolling in through the middle mouse button. And we could rotate again, and maybe we press and hold the middle mouse button in order to move up, zoom in a bit more on her face. And now we have a shot from above her head focused on her face, and that should be good for our frame 60 keyframe. So let's go ahead and register that and play the animation one more time. So you can see the uh, camera moves in two different ways. A couple more things about the camera. Let's see, on frame 80, you can expand the view angle if you want the camera to be able to capture more of the scene at once. So as you can see, low view angle isn't going to be capturing much, but a high view angle will. Uh, and that's measured in degrees, of course. So I'll register that 89 degrees for uh, frame 80. And then on frame 100, let's try actually following a specific bone. So. Uh, normally the camera is kind of uh, going to target whatever you set it to target, but if you have it set to follow bone, then the camera is actually going to be focused on a part of your character. So let's do follow bone head and da, 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 da. maybe we got to zoom out a bit more. Okay, that's that's pretty good. So in order for the follow cam to work, we're going to need to uh, actually have Hatsune Miku move so that there's something for the camera to follow. So I'm going to just have everything selected as a start a keyframe at 80, and we could just uh, register that keyframe. So let's actually do that. And then we'll go to frame 100 and move Miku along the x-axis. Register that again. And we'll go back to the camera just to kind of make sure that that's working. I also added a keyframe at 81 that jumps straight to a follow cam. And uh, then it proceeds to keep following Miku. So let's see what's actually happening here. Okay, so frame 100, she's on the right. Frame 80, she's there. But what happens if we look at the camera? It's uh, actually very hard to tell that she's moving at all because it's tracking her uh, her movement. Um, I mean, her head specifically. So you can see that the background's moving, but because so what you can see happen from frames 81 to 100 is her position doesn't really move in the shot except for the uh, zoom in. So we can actually fix that zoom a little bit. So with a proper follow cam at frame 81 and 100. What you'll notice is that she stays completely centered in the shot because it's uh, following her head and the rest of her body isn't moving at all. So we'll go ahead and play this and you'll be able to see that the background will move, but Hatsune Miku doesn't actually move in the shot. It looks almost as if she's sliding, uh, which she kind of is, um, but despite that, she stays centered in the shot. So yeah, that's how you can actually follow a specific bone of a character or the character itself um, instead of just having the camera do its own thing and basically rely on manual controls.